usually forget to do that. I wanted to remind you that we really only do three simple things in send out cards. You've probably heard me, if you've been around send out cards for a while, you've probably heard me talk about this before, but it's important to constantly go back to it because it's so easy to forget, especially in the world that we live in today. We send cards every day to make other people's lives better. We take a few minutes every day. It can be five minutes a day. It could be 15 minutes a day. It could be 30 minutes a day. For some of you, it could be an hour a day. But we're going to sit down with our computer or our phone, and we're going to send out some positivity every day. That's the first thing we do. And isn't it so cool that we get to do that? That, that that's the work that we do? It's not work. That we can do that every day. That's the first thing we do is we send out cards every day. The second thing we do is we share send out cards every day. You've heard me say before that Cody and Greg and the send out cards team, the fantastic send out cards team, they do all the heavy lifting. They do the hard stuff. They invest the millions of dollars to set up the infrastructure. They manage the inventory. They manage the payroll. They manage the legal. We don't need to do any of that. That's all we need to do is share a good idea with people. And that's the second thing we do every day. That's it. We share it with other people. And then we follow up with those people that are interested. But the third thing we do is we um, earn our awards. And you know, to this day, that, that three core challenge, I'm gonna talk about that at the end of tonight, uh, just for a couple of minutes. But the three core challenge, I earned that fairly on. And the reason is because I'm doing the three things. Even though, you know, when you're brand new, your first goal is to earn your awards all the way to manager, which you'll, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, go back to the SOC Pro app and click on the learn button at the bottom and watch those videos. There's less than an hour of videos in there. Watch those videos and it'll teach you the different awards that you can earn. And I just keep going back and doing the simple things every day. I'm sending cards every day anywhere from three to 10 cards every single day. I'm sharing send out cards one to three times a day and I'm earning my awards. And the reason I earned the three core challenge is because I'm doing those things every day. So for some of you, it's easy for you to send the cards and you know you should be sharing send out cards every day, but you're not. And the reason you're not doing it is because you don't have the connections yet to, to set up those appointments to be able to show it. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. You know, one of the most powerful things you can do is to share your send a free card link from your SOC Pro app and, and, or, or from your send out cards app. There's a share button in your send out cards app under account as well. And in when you share it, then letting somebody else experience it. And if you just get on the phone with them or on a Zoom and walk them through sending that card, that is sharing send out cards. But there's two questions I like to ask myself every day in doing those three things, those three simple things, sending cards every day, sharing send out cards every day, and earning my awards. There's three simple things I like to do every day. Uh, there's three things that, those are the three things I like to do every day, but there's two questions I like to ask myself every day that helps to support those things. And one is, how can I make my cards more meaningful? And the second one is, how can I reach more people? How can I make my cards more meaningful? So what I think about when I think about making my cards more meaningful, it's like, how do I connect with people at a deeper level in what I say in the cards or what I put in the cards? You know, I want people to know that I appreciate them. Sometimes it's a simple thing like you're important to me. Something as simple as that, but, but connecting with people at a deeper level. How can I make my cards more meaningful? Telling people what you love about them. Telling people what you appreciate about them. Thanking them, not just as a thank you, but what is it that you're thanking them for? Asking that question every day, how can I make my cards more meaningful? What can I put in my cards? What can I say in my cards that will make sure that when the card reaches the person that I'm sending it to, that they get that they're important to me? One of the most powerful things that anybody ever said to me was, you know what, Jordan, you're important to me. And I put that in a lot of my cards because it touched me at a deep level. And I know that when I say that to other people, as long as I mean it, it's going to touch them at that same level. The second question, again, that I ask myself every day is how can I reach more people? How can I reach more people? 
and and ideas are endless. Um, I, I I went back to the to the uh, the call I did the Zoom I did with with Darla a couple weeks ago, and in that one short Zoom that we did, there's so many great ideas for uh, organically giving other people an opportunity to experience send out cards. If you don't know what I'm talking about, or if you kind of remember it, but you're not sure, go back, go to thecoolbuzz.com, find that, it's also on my YouTube channel, find that video and watch it because it's so powerful in terms of connecting with people and giving them an opportunity to experience send out cards the way it was intended to be experienced. Ideas are endless. There's an endless number, especially today, with all the stuff that's out there, there's so many different ways that you can connect with people today. Pick two or three and just focus on those. Pick two or three and just focus on those. Um, my strategy, my philosophy is to continue to meet new people every day. However, I do that. Um, you know, I just, every day there's through something like I had a couple of new service people come up to my place on Mount Charleston and do some work for me. You probably heard about that. Those are two new connections. I put them in my contact manager. I got a message back from one of them. Both of them should be using send out cards. And so those are new people that I can set up appointments with. Um, I have an appointment with a woman that I was at her recording studio last week in Phoenix to record a five minute video and she had never heard of send out cards. And she had her team there, small team. But, but that's a, again, that's another connection. That's how I like to meet people. And then I put them in my contact manager. I send them in my relationship manager. I send them a card and then I stay in touch with them. And I set up times to show them send out cards. I'm actually in process back and forth with the woman that has the recording studio um, and sharp, sharp woman. And she has her own radio show. And, and so I've got that set up. So I, wanna, I want her to experience send out cards. And of course, I sent her a card with pictures of her and her team, uh, along with a gift, a br some brownies. And I just know that that's going to probably turn into something. So that's the way I do it. And then also, um, because I have lots of people over the years, I have lots and lots of people in my relationship manager today. There's a lot of people that when their timing gets, when the timing's better, they contact me. You don't want to wait for that, especially if you really want to get your business going. You don't want to wait for people to contact you. That's more of a marketing strategy long term. But right now, you want to be reaching out to people and making those connections. So um, pick two or three ideas. And if you're short on ideas, go back to the cool buzz and start watching some of my Zooms because they're filled with ideas on different ways that you can meet people. So I had some guests up. I'm not going to mention their names, but I had some guests up on Mount Charleston last night. And I've known this guy and his wife for probably nine, 10 years, probably. And uh, he used to be signed up and send out cards. And he made a couple comments while we were up there. We had a great time. We went on a hike. He had his couple, couple they had their kids with them. We went on a hike. Um, we cooked, uh, we, we barbecued last night out on the deck. Um, what else did we do? Um, we watched a movie. Uh, I sat up late and talked to him after the kids and his wife went to bed. We talked about business stuff. We didn't talk about send out cards or network marketing. He's involved in commercial real estate. And so we were talking about all that stuff. And at one point he said to me, we were doing dishes and he said to me, Jordan, you got to be honest, send out cards is an expense. It's a cost because he didn't use send out cards anymore. He used it for a very short time. He said, send out cards is a cost. And of course, in my mind, and probably in your mind, send out cards isn't a cost. Uh, it's got a very high return on investment, right? If you use it regularly, uh, anybody that's got a business, any kind of a traditional business or a commercial real estate, if they use it, I mean, heck, one card could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars to him. So I proceeded to tell him Gail Zintek's story and then I also told him the story about the flood that I had in my place in the mountains and how uh, both those service providers, the plumber and the, and the, um, the, the uh, restoration company are losing hundreds of thousands of dollars a year because they're not using send out cards. I told them, him those two stories and he kind of got it. But in his mind for years, for like eight years in his mind, he thought of send out cards as a cost. It's an expense. It's something extra he has to spend money on. He didn't get it. And then he said something else to me, just demonstrating to me how 
naive people are about what we do. He said, yeah, he's talking about, I'm talking about, I didn't, I wasn't even talking about in business. He brought it up, but it was very implied in what he was saying. You have to manage all those people, like as if I'm managing you. He looks at it as like that you're my employees. You know, you, I have to oversee you. And what I tried to explain to him is that if a network marketer has to manage their people, they'll never make much money. They're never, you're never going to make much money if you have to manage your people. Your job, and there are people that tonight that are on our team that are listening to this thinking that they're, they're limiting their growth because they feel like they have to manage everybody that comes in. And the truth is we're all independent distributors. We have a support system in place. We've got lots and lots of training that's available. There's systems in place. But the truth is the more you manage people, the less successful you're going to be in this business. The only way to be successful in network marketing is to speak into your team, whether it be a, t a small team or a big team, that, 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 that you are an independent distributor and it's your responsibility to build your business. I'm a support, I'm, uh, I'm part of your support system, just like Cody's part of your support system and the, and the customer service people are part of your support system and our production people are part of the support system and our gifting people are part of the support system. We're all part of that system that, that helps to uh, provide the, the infrastructure for growth, but I don't manage you and you don't manage your team. If you have to manage your team, you're only going to grow to arm's length, meaning you'll only be able to grow as far as you can reach. And no one will build a big business having to have their hand in everything. So your job and my job is to get people started. And then it's up to them. It's up to you whether you want to build the business over the long haul. All right. So, and this is a real important, it's a simple distinction, but I think probably about half the people that come into network marketing, they limit their growth because they're afraid they have to manage everybody. And the truth is if I, I've got, I've had a quarter million people sign up with me in my organization and send out cards in the past 16 years. Can you imagine if I had to manage a quarter million people? That doesn't work. I don't manage anybody. I don't manage Judy O'Higgins or Darla DeGrandi or Gail Zintek or Brian Perez or Kathy Connors or uh, I could go on and on. I don't manage any of them. They're my friends and I'm available as a support system. But if I had to manage them, I would go crazy. You want your freedom. Don't tether yourself to, the, to other people's boats. Because if you tether yourself to their boat, they're not going to be free to sail and neither are you. So um, when this guy who was my friend who was up on the mountain started saying, Jordan, your business, you know, how do you manage all those people? He didn't get it. And he also didn't get that send out cards is not a cost. Send out cards is not even an investment. It's more than that, way more than that. And I don't know if he got it or not, but I think he did. So I want to share, um, I learned some things from um, a, a, a top leader. In fact, he was the number one guy in my last company. Um, he and his wife, Jay and Meg Smith, you've heard me talk about him. I dedicated my first book to Jay. Uh, Jay passed away many years ago, but he was a mentor to me. And he and Meg, when I was brand new in network, I, I had been in network marketing for years, but I'd never made a penny, never signed anybody up. They came to Phoenix. And I remember we were sitting in an ice cream shop on, on Scottsdale Road. And I was so frustrated because some of my friends were really taken off in the business. And I just, my business was just not, it wasn't happening. And this again was my 12th network marketing company. And I still had like nothing going on. And I had a few people that I'd signed up, but there was no growth. And uh, I told um, Jay, I was frustrated. And he looked at me, he was probably at that point in his late 50s, early 60s. And he looked at me, he was the top guy in the company. And he said, Jordan, the, now I want you to understand something. I saw myself as the leader in Phoenix because I was all, the only person in Phoenix bringing people into the company. And it wasn't a lot. I had a, a small handful of people, small, like under 10, under 10. And my team, my entire team. And 
I remember saying to Jay, I was frustrated because my friends, their teams were growing and my team wasn't growing. And he said to me, Jordan, the reason it's not growing in Phoenix is because there's no leadership in Phoenix. He said it to me like three times. And the truth is it cut pretty, it cut pretty deep when he said it because I saw myself as the leader, but he said, Jordan, there are no leaders. And he was right. Later on, I didn't fully understand. I didn't comprehend what he was saying until many years later. Many years later, I started looking at where there was growth in our business and including, you know, I had a very large team there. I ended up with a growing a large, very, very large network marketing business in my last company of tens of thousands of people and quarter million customers in my last company. But I started looking back and remembering what Jay said to me. And I started realizing that wherever there was growth, there was leadership. It didn't have to do with the market. It didn't have to do with, well, Phoenix grows, but Sacramento doesn't. Or Sacramento grows, but Miami doesn't. My part of the country is different. Or my friends are different. Or you don't understand my family. Or you don't understand the business community in this area. It's about leadership. And what is leadership? Leadership is being the first to do it. Now, that doesn't mean you're the first in. That means you're the first to do it. So, for example, if you want your customers to send cards, you send cards. Don't worry about whether they're sending cards. You send cards to them. If you want people to be on this Zoom every week. If you want your team, you be on the Zoom every week and let people know that you're going to be on it. If you want people to share send out cards every day, you share send out cards every day. That's being the, that's being the lead, leader, like doing it first. If, if, if you want to be in the three core challenge and you want to come to the special event in January, you do it first. Don't blame your downline for not doing it. You do it first. So Jay, used, Jay said to me back then, and I got it later, years later, where there's leadership, there's growth. Where there's leadership, with growth, there's growth. And that means being the example, you do it first. And you do it at a level that others aren't doing it. That's how you be a leader. You do it at a level. Think about the people that you consider to be leaders in our company. They're doing it at a level that others don't do it, right? So you want to take it to a, the next level. And you want to be resourceful and take responsibility for your business. So that was the first thing. The second thing he did, he used to say all the time, do what's worth duplicating. You want to do what's worth duplicating. In other words, there are things out there. These ring lights are pretty crazy. Huh? Look at this. All this light is coming from this. Just this little ring light that costs 10 bucks on Amazon. So Jay used to say, um, you want to do what's worth duplicating. And again, that was one of those things that he would say that I didn't fully comprehend until many months or even many years later. And that really has to do with, there are things out there that you can do that are good for you, but other people won't do it because it's not simple, because it's hard to learn, it takes time. Maybe it costs a lot of money. It may be really good for you. It might be able to help you make some money, but it's not going to duplicate and you'll never get to the big money doing that. The only way you get to the big money is to have an organization that duplicates. So he said, only do what's worth duplicating. He used to say to me, if, if an eight-year-old can't do it, can't learn it and can't do it now, if an eight-year-old can't learn it and do it now, then don't do it. Don't do it because if you do it, you're setting an example that others will not duplicate. They'll go, oh, wow, she's really great, or he's really great. He's really, really great at that, and I can see why he's doing so well, but there's no duplication. And the reason there's no duplication is because what they're doing is something that either takes too much time to learn, it's complex, it's just not something simple. So you only want to do what's worth duplicating. That's why when you hear my message, and many of you have said this to me over the years, Everybody says this, they go, Jordan, your message is so simple and I can do that. That's why my business is big. That's why it's duplicated. And that's why it continues to duplicate. So you want to do what's worth duplicating. And so, man, it got dark, didn't it? Like 
it was light when I started this thing and just like 15 minutes, it's all dark. So <clears throat> the third thing that Jay did and said that really he did this, it was something he did that had a huge impact on me. This was again, long before send out cards was even an idea. Send out cards wasn't even an idea when Jay did this, but I was sitting in an at an event. Jay was Jay and his wife Meg were sitting behind me and I had never signed up a single distributor in my life in anything. So this was my 12th company. This was a company that I ultimately went on and did well with initially. But Jay was sitting behind me and I felt a tap on my shoulder and he handed me a note. I still have the note. It has his, it was on his letterhead. It said from the desk of Jay Smith at the top and the note said in handwriting, his handwriting, nothing would make me happier than to see you get your executive promotion and soon. And, he, and then he signed his name and Jay was a celebrity in my, in my eyes. You know, he was a, he was, um, he was the number one guy in the company and I'd never signed up anybody and I didn't know him very well. But he handed me this note and I remember the impact that that note had on me. The, the, it, 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 it touched me at the core. Like when I read that note, it made me believe in myself more than I did before he handed me the note. And I look at that's what I do today. I send out notes of encouragement to people on cards. It had a huge impact on me. And that's what we get to do every day. So I want to close up with, with two things. Briefly, I want to talk about why do network marketing. And then I want to talk about briefly the three core challenge. In fact, I'm going to do it in the app. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about why do network marketing and the three core challenge. You know, there's lots of different ways people can make money. Uh, one way you could make money would be to get another job, right? If you've got a job and right now, there's probably 20 times as many people looking for the same jobs than there were before the pandemic. It's a hard time to get a job. And if you've got younger kids, um, then going to get a job, a second job may not even be an option because you got to pay somebody to watch your kids while you're going off to work. And I don't even know, you know, that model today just is a little bit even obsolete. It's even, it doesn't even apply when I talk about it that way, but that's kind of how it was before. You could start a traditional business. What does it cost to start a traditional business? On the low end, $20,000, an average probably in the range of 90,000 to a couple hundred thousand bucks to start a business, of which 95% of them don't even make it through their fifth year. 95% don't even make it to their fifth year. And most people have to borrow money to start a traditional business. You can do that. And the more successful you become, the less freedom you have. The more successful you become in a traditional business, the less freedom you have. As you grow, you have, you have, to, um, you have to invest in infrastructure in a traditional business in advance. That's money typically that you have to borrow. And many of you have done this. And in fact, there are people that are listening in tonight that had millions of dollars invested in traditional businesses in the past. And think about all the people, all the hundreds of thousands of businesses today that are closing their doors where they have their life savings invested. Why do network marketing? You know, what franchise, let's say you could go out and buy a franchise, Subway, a Dairy Queen, $75,000. You got to have 75,000 to get in, a quarter million in uh, liquid assets to get in and you don't make money for three years. You won't be profitable for three years. And the most you can make it's actually probably more than 75,000 now, probably closer to 150,000, but the most you could make at a Dairy Queen, if you, and you gotta manage teenagers, right? The most you could make at a Dairy Queen if you're very successful is probably about 80 or $90,000 a year and you gotta manage that. And you got a cap on your income. So you could invest your life savings in a franchise. I mean, you look at what the options are out there to start businesses today that have an upside potential and. All businesses are hard. Network marketing is no different. The difference is in network marketing, there's really only a couple things you need to do. Use the product and share it with others. And the company does the hard part. And there's no limit to the income. You know, as soon as a subway, as soon as the owner of the subway locks the door, their income stops. They don't get a recurring income. Network marketing gives you a recurring income and you can get started on a shoestring. You can get started for the cost of a month of, of uh, uh, um, what would you call it? recreation, like going out on the town. For a month of what you'd spend to go out on the town, you can start a network marketing business and it's got a huge upside. And there's more free training, more free 
um, personal development from people that have actually done it than any other type of business out there. What other type of business gives you the opportunity to travel the world and have a residual income? You know, it's not something that, it's not a get rich quick scheme. It doesn't happen overnight, but neither is anything else. Any traditional business, look at what it takes to get a real estate license to sell real estate and you sell a property and you are unemployed until you sell the next property. And it costs you thousands of dollars to get your real estate license. I was a real estate investor for years and I got out. I had 49 rentals that I bought with my network marketing income and then I ended up getting out. I sold all of them because of the headaches. I got tired of getting calls in the middle of the night from people, um, my property managers, telling me that the tree, the big oak tree, got blown over in a storm and landed on the neighbor's car. And it was my tree because it was on one of my rentals. You know, all the headaches that come with that kind of a physical business. I love network marketing because you can build it from anywhere. You can be on a beach. You can be anywhere there's an internet connection. You can build your network marketing business. And again, it's not easy. It's hard work, but it's got a huge upside potential and you've got residual. And the more successful you become, the more freedom you become, unlike it you get. Unlike a traditional business where the more successful you become, the less freedom you have. So if you're gonna put your work into something, why not put your work into something that doesn't have a cap? Why not put your work into something that pays you over and over again for working one time? Why not put your work into something that the more that you grow, the more your business grows? So with that, I want to kind of wrap up just by saying um, your three core challenge. I really want all of you, there's a lot of you that are, you know it's there and you're thinking about it, but you're not going for it. Uh, and there's still time. It's not a hard thing to do. It's just getting it on your calendar. Start setting some, some um, milestones for yourself on your calendar every week to get that done. What do you have to do to get that three core challenge done? Attend the three events. Most of you are already doing that. Get three subscriptions and three 395 system packages. The holidays are coming. It's super easy. It makes so much sense. If somebody's going to send out holiday cards, 395 gives them 300 system sends. That drops the price down to $1.31 a card plus the stamp. Everybody who's sending Christmas cards or holiday cards out this year should have that system package. And so it's like super, super easy. If you're sharing it, it's super easy to get those three systems. If you're not sharing it, it's hard. But if you're sharing it, it's super easy. Set some milestones for yourself. Put some things on your calendar that you're going to go for it. The first step is to say, you know what? I'm going for it. I'm going to go for it. A lot of you aren't going for it, and that's why you're not getting it. But you want to be there in January. You want to be hanging out with all those beautiful people in, in uh, Salt Lake City in January and hearing all the exciting news. I want you to do it. I want you to be there with us. And so the only way you're going to be there with us, if you decide that you're going to get it done. So many of you are so close, you're almost there and you know you're going, but there's a lot of you that haven't even gone for it. You haven't made the decision. And I, I want you to make a decision tonight that you're going to get your three subscription customers, you're going to attend your three events, and you're going to get your three system packages sold. And that's all you need to do is decide and then put it on your calendar, just like we've talked about in the past. Put it on your calendar. So, all right, I've talked enough. i got to get off my soapbox here. Um, you guys all have a great week. Send a card to Rich, man. He deserves a card from every single one of us after what he did and what he went through. So love you guys. Have a great week. And uh, I'm like a floating head, right? Anyway, love you guys. See you later. Bye-bye.